Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Business Spotlight. I am Scott McMeans with Action Coach. I am honored today to have Jennifer Malcolm from Genesis Associates. We're going to learn a little bit about what Genesis Associates is all about. But before we get there, let me let Jennifer introduce herself, tell us a little bit about her story. Jennifer, the camera and the microphone are yours. Sounds tell us good. your story. Thanks, Scott, for having me this morning. I really appreciate your time. And uh, it's a fabulous story. It's a it's a love story. It's a <laughs> story in progress. It's a play. And um, it's a it's a masterpiece. Uh, my life is a masterpiece and it's still a work in progress. But um, I'll give you a glimpse of a little bit of the work that has gotten me here and a little bit of the story that got me here. And um love to uh, share this with you and the audience. So perfect. Uh, yeah. So part of my story is I've, uh, I have had my business, uh, which does not define me, but is a crucial part of me uh, for 14 years. Um, I grew up um, uh, in a really nurturing, loving family here in Northeast Ohio. And kind of as I morphed into uh, adulthood, uh, kind of picked a, a career that I thought I wanted to do. And um, kind of jumped into that, uh, was, ended up being a high school science teacher right out of college for a few years. And, um, then during that time also got married and started nurturing a family. And I have, uh, now 20, almost 23 year old son, almost a uh, 22 year old daughter and almost 20 year old daughter, um, uh, at this time. But, uh, in that youthful age in my twenties, I was having babies and, um, in a, uh, family that um, was beautiful and uh, gave me a lot of just gifts, including my three babies. Um, but uh, 11 years into that marriage, uh, it ended and my life kind of took a um, split road in 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 my life mm -hmm. and a very painful, painful time of uh, just loneliness and uh, shame and embarrassment. And, um, and in that time, uh, I just felt the whisperings of God just say, you know, who do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, I have no effing clue. I really don't. I really don't. Um, Because I kind of had had this persona in this life for so long. And so it just bit, uh, the idea of hope and a, a dream dropped into my heart. And the idea was I wanted to uh, be able to be around my young kids that were then four, six and seven uh, going through a divorce and separation. And um, my want was to nurture and love on them as much as I could and create a safe space and keep some normalcy. And uh, Genesis and Associates was born. And for me, um, I have a Judeo-Christian background. And for me, it was going back to the Garden of Eden with God and where God and man communed and where life and creation and just new things were just there. And so there's a play on the name. It is my name, Gen Jennifer inserted into Genesis. Yeah but with the biblical kind of premises of just new creations and new beginnings. And so when I started it in 2011, it was supposed to just be me doing some supplemental work on the side virtually for um, organizations, mostly as like a virtual admin um, that just provided support that gave um, a little bit of fresh air and perspective and wings into uh, other people's businesses. And coming out of uh, a recession of 2009, where people had to backtrack and cut um, and, and really prune and keep, you know, the, the tree well, and there was financial decisions to cut back 2011, yeah. people had a little bit more opportunity to grow and to expand. And so as a breath of fresh air to organizations. So that's the beginning of the story. Do you have any questions or I can keep going? Jennifer, no, <laughs> that is a beautiful story. And what I love about it is the perseverance of somebody that, could easily have been told you've been kicked to the ground. You've got your teeth knocked out. Stay down. Yes. But you didn't. And I, your faith in God and your true calling for something, as you, as you uh, said, a hope and a dream. Mm -hmm. And you've turned your nurturing, loving um, side of you with your children into, all right, I'm going to nurture and love my clients in such a way that I'm going to make them better for their business. This is a really interesting story, Jennifer, one that I wasn't expecting, to be quite honest, because you're so upbeat. Every time we've had a chance to talk, you've always been this upbeat person. So what was the pivotal change in your career that, that got you to be this marketing guiding person that, that works with co companies across Northeast Ohio that makes them better? How did you get that transition? Because normally high school teachers don't do this kind of stuff. <laughs> 
Um, I think it's the the best analogy that I can share. It's like the frog being boiled in a pot. Like I didn't know what I didn't know. And mm -hmm. had I looked at the growth and where this was taking me, I probably would have said, hell no. Like, no, that's too much. It's too big. It's too, too massive. I don't want to do that, that part. And what I found though, was that I could say yes to small things and I can make a next best decision in the small things that if you look back and track over time, those small differences and those small steps make a big difference. And you, you're you down the path and the road that you may not have gone down on your natural inclination because the road was tough, but taking that breadcrumb and taking that um, light that guides my feet um, really Ooh. was really um, setting the path. And so I kind of helped, fell into it backwards. It was not a probably conscious, proactive wow, this is my big pivot. It just was small yeses in my heart that made a big impact. And um, that morphed into 2012, uh, just a client that I had here in Northeast Ohio, Terry Morasco. She used to run the uh, paper uh, piece within uh, the plane dealer that was just about showcasing, kind of like what you're doing, showcasing businesses and yeah. sh sharing it in into Northeast Ohio. Of Here's some businesses and kind of cool nuances. And uh she said, you have a cool story. And um, this was about seven or eight months after I started the business. And she said, can I capture your story? And so I said, absolutely. And then it was just interview. And uh, then we dictated, <laughs> we dictated it and it was transcribed and it was in the paper, but it ran January 1st, 2012 on the front page of the Plain Dealer on a Sunday morning. And it was um, just this beautiful article just showcasing the story. And um, I got some traction. I got some people that were like, hey, I I would love to work with you. That seems like something that I can align myself. I have, I'm a graphic designer. I'm a web designer. I'm a writer. Um, and then it also attracted clients that said, hey, you know what? I have some gap. I have some breathing room in my budget. And can uh, Genesis come and help me? And so it was just this, again, that that fork in the road that uh, really yeah. amplified uh, where the business was going. The simplest thing is the most significant thing. And what you've made comment that saying yes to small things has led you to this big difference. And the analogy of being the frog in the pot, and I normally that's a negative connotation, right? But you've turned it into a positive uh, story because I didn't know how much I was growing every time I had a chance to grow. The heat around me just got bigger and I grew. And what an interesting perspective to have on the story of the frog in the pot when most people say, didn't realize I was getting burned alive. And you, you turn it into, <laughs> I realized every with every degree it raised, I was learning something and becoming a different person so I could be a better server to my clients. That's amazing. So all this spirit, all this idea, all this genuine uh, traits that come out, all right, specifically what is different about Genesis that allows you to have the clientele that you've had for the number of years that you've had, because I know you've had clients around for a long time. Yeah. yeah. So what is it about Genesis that separates that group, you from anybody else? Yeah. And and I'm going to put a pin on this one. So maybe you and I need to make some frog stew or some frog soup. <laughs> at some point and we'll see. I don't even know if that's a thing, but can we make some uh, frog stew? Um, I think what, uh, makes us different. And and I have so many colleagues in our space and you, you Google Northeast Ohio, you know, marketing firms and marketing agencies, and you'll get hundreds, you'll get hundreds. There's just so many yeah. options out there. And so in a very saturated market in a very no noisy market, what is that thread? What is that green line? What's that um, connection that, that differentiates and, and uh, connects us to people and organizations. And I would say it's built on, um, our core values, which is uh, pick Genesis, or I'm sorry, pick fun, uh, which is passionate, innovative, collaborative, and knowledgeable. That's our foundational external core values to clients. We want to be passionate about your work. We want to be innovative about your work. We want to be collaborative about your work. And we want to use knowledge and expertise to bring to your work. And then the fun is our internal core values, which is focused, united, and and noble, which is part of my, that is my name, maiden name too, and it kind of fell into that happenstance. Oh my. <laughs> But um, that we are, we want to have fun. We want to have joy in our work. We want to, we don't want to be begrudgingly, you know, plowing fields and coming in and and being angry. We want it to nurture our souls in the fun and the creativity. And the united is that together we're better. 
I can have ideas and I can only run so far, but in a collaborative space and in a united front, we can we can accomplish so much more. And then the noble piece has to do with integrity, to be strong with our word mm -hmm. and to be impeccable with our word and to be choice with our words and our commitments. And so I think those foundations of pick fun with Genesis is just kind of a, a great springboard that differentiates. We're a tactical marketing firm. So those pieces of content, strategy, or sorry, content, I'm going to kick strategy over to this bucket, uh, content, uh, website design, uh, blogs, case studies, words, anything that's uh, that's enriching the story and helping tell the story of uh, organizations is the is the heartbeat of what Genesis is. And to to capture that story, because when we capture that story, and it, we'll say it for your business, you bring that human connection, you bring that relationship to it versus an egocentric way that most of us write, which is, here's what I can do for you. Here's my saving grace. Here's that versus really nurturing the needs and wants. And so it's really through open ears and open heart that we do the tactical. What we did split off, and it's now a DBA of Genesis, is, is the Albi Group, which it's O. W L B E E. So we're bringing in the the owl, which is wisdom. We're bringing in the bee, uh, the bumblebees, which is honey, and the community. And through that is the consultative arm, which is a uh, fractional uh, CMO, which we've been doing for seven years. Fractional COO, integrator services, and visionary services. So from the strategic high level, where organizations and uh, people get stuck, we need an interim solution. We may need a long term solution. We just don't have the vision to get yeah. us to where we want to go, we have this consultative group that helps uh, thread those vision, that vision piece together to give, bring light and, and amplify what's already in your heart, in your organization. And so we are a mirror to reflect what you're saying, but then we wow. take that and use a catalyst and we put our, our fertilizer and our, and our yummy composting juiciness that we know and things that work into best practice. And then we put that onto the soil of your um, organization. And with that combination, it just really sprouts and grows. What an amazing articulated story you just gave me. Thank you. That's fantastic. So I want to, I want to get the name of the consulting arm. You, you said it brings in the owl, but I, I want to make sure I understand what was it? Yep. It's um, capital O W L L and then B the bumblebee, but capital B E E. So it's the owl and the bee, those two Got animals it. coming together and Got taking it. their nurturing and, and characteristics and using that as a box and container of what we want to do with uh, the consulting arm. Very interesting way of saying you're very smart at what you do and very active in getting it done. I will be. Love it. <laughs> what, what a clear picture you, 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 you. you paint for us. This is Thank great. You. Now, you're so well put together. This organization that you have has got now two different arms and it's cranking. It's doing all these things. And you're happy, you're telling a great story, but there has to be challenges that you faced over the years. And there has to be something that another entrepreneur can yeah. learn from. So what would you say, Jennifer, is one of the biggest challenges that you've had? Yeah. And how did you go about fixing that or, or addressing that to either make it something that you never will do again, or you've used it as a launching pad to do something different. I'm curious how you handle the challenges in the development of Genesis. Sure. I guess part, part of my story is, but the biggest obstacle that I had to overcome was my own ego. And okay, it, wow. it was um, pride and it was, I can do this and I'm strong and I'm resilient and I'm a hard worker and to just push, kind of push the vision and push the team. Mm -hmm. And through that perspective, um, you know, shadows of that I couldn't see of mine uh, were personified and seen within the business. And I was uh, eager and got a business coach uh, 2012 to 2016, uh, local entrepreneur, uh, friend, colleague, uh, David Akers. And he taught me uh, this mm -hmm. nuance that was your business right now is a mirror of you. It amplifies and reflects your strengths, but it amplifies your weaknesses too. And so yeah. some of the biggest things is I, I couldn't have crucial conversations. I was uh, withdrawn. And I think that comes through divorce and through rejection and through that, that, mm -hmm. that, that my business, I couldn't have strategic one-on-one -on -one pur purposeful needed conversations uh, within my team, within my executive team, within my, my clients to really say what I thought versus just striving to say, this is what I should say, or this is what I should, should get to. So it's not a hard skill necessarily, 
but it's one I think mm. that all of us that take away that we are often our biggest um, restrictors. And when we can yeah. look at ourselves with humility, love, grace, compassion, and to continue to heal and to be humble through the process and to say, you know what, you're actually better at this than me, Scott. And I would love to use your skill set <laughs> as a master, whatever. And I, oh, here's Chad that is great at these things. And, you know, instead of me pushing and amplifying that it has to go through me, um, and it took years and it took a lot of failure. It took a lot of heartache of mm -hmm. losing clients, losing team members, um, where my pride and my um, ambition or my desire to push through something alone um, hindered. And, you know, there's there's regret and there's, um, but it's learning. I'm learning through this process of the more I'm humble and the more I'm eager to utilize the resources around me um, is where the the magic is in the the frog stew and to, <laughs> to really just take it to the next place. That's uh, That's a really good way of, telling people despite how smart you may think you are you're not the smartest person in the room because you don't know everything about anything okay. what you do know is there's people willing to help you and if you humble yourself yeah. enough to a point where you allow people to enter your world they will not only help you but they will lift your life to a different place that you never thought was possible yeah because you're open to it. And you've made so many different comments today, Jennifer, about open ears, open heart, which is a great one. Um, the soft skills that you were, you were commenting to just a moment ago, it all boils down to what are you willing to do to make your business successful? And if you want to do everything on your own, that's great. And you're going to get all those rewards, but you're going to get those rewards in a vacuum because it doesn't necessarily go that way because you need people to help you. Regardless of where you are in life, you need people to help you. 100%. The sooner you recognize that, the sooner off you, or the, the better off you will be sooner, because now you've got a collective team that works with you, as opposed to you trying to do everything at once. It's, that's same, a wonderful recognition. And the same goes with clients. The same thing is, I know what I know. You know, I know my perspective, but you know your business. You know the heartbeat of that better than I do, because you're in that nuance every day. And so to come in from a humble helper and a humble guide and a humble catalyst for your organization, I think is some of the secret sauce that we have. Yeah, I think there's a very similar alignment to what you do. Um, you're, you're a marketing consultant expert on this side. And whoever you're working with is a market expert in the industry that they work within. I look at myself as I'm a business expert in that I can help a business become better than it was because I know those things but I don't necessarily know your specific market or your specific industry, but between our two organizations working with somebody else, when you put them together, it becomes a formidable force that cannot be beaten because you have all this expertise in one room that's coupling knowledge and allowing the experiences that you both had to contribute to something bigger than the one sole entity. And it becomes a flourishing environment that not only good ideas, but good action items and deliverables come to uh, the, come to be born in this environment that allows it to happen. Yeah. When you restrict access to stuff like that is when you restrict growth. Yeah. And the biggest challenge I have with a lot of people, and I'm sure you can echo this, is people love staying in their comfort zones. But that's just your brain telling you to stay safe, so stay inside your comfort zone, right? It's the anxiety that your brain's telling you to stay uh, comfortable. Once you break through and you realize all it was was one step to the left and I can have a different perspective, boom. And I'm assuming, and Jennifer, you correct me if I'm wrong, but when you work with your clients, it's nothing more than just a little bit different angle and you see it differently. And now this whole story comes unfolding right in front of you. And I think that's amazing because it's it's something that people miss out on. For right? sure. For sure. Yeah. This is a great lesson because there's so much tied up in don't be so high in your own hill. Don't get above your skis. Realize that there's opportunity to be not only humbled, but once you humble yourself, you realize there's so many people that are willing to lift you up. And that's a good place to be. What do you think are the biggest opportunities for Genesis? Now that you've gotten just a certain point, you're 14 years into this, where are you going to go next? You know, I'm going to go back to the question that you had somebody or the, the voice of God tell you, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? 
What is Genesis and Alby? What are you going to be when they grow up? What's that look like for you? We really want that to be just as well-oiled machine. I, I want to get more and more personally out of Genesis and Associates, and I want my team to just trust, trust, trust that they can okay. grow and and to run the tactical arms of this. We're nurturing a few key leaders within our organizations to take on more and to challenge them to rise into that leadership. And for my husband and I, Chad, to play more in the Albi group and to nurture that one. So I really just see this as a one-two approach that, you know, if you need tactical, you do not have to uh, have Albi. You don't have to have the consultative piece. And if you need uh, the consultative piece, you don't have to use Genesis. But together, they make this beautiful spread wings mm -hmm. of, uh, of amplification. And so for us, the Albi group is new. Uh, it's just started uh, in 2024. And so we're nurturing that and trying to figure part of that out. But I love the key point that you said also about safety and the perspectives of if you shift a little bit to the left and I bring mm -hmm. a little bit of, of, of insight to a situation, a different perspective. Uh, we had a, a situation this week where there were some wet footprints in our bathroom floor and we took a picture and looked at it and I said, you know, my husband, I said, what do you see? And he goes, oh, I just see wet fun footprints, like dog prints that, you know, they got out of the bath and there's footprints all over. And mine went to... I see a bloody mess, like a murder scene, because it was just it was a, the way it was closed. And and so what it revealed, though, is we saw the same picture from two, the same, the same picture, but two different perspectives. One was nurturing and loving. Mine hit a safety something that is a wound, which doesn't serve me. And so how we are able yeah. to say is, how can I switch my perspective to see joy, to see what he's seeing? And so for this, those pieces of the consultative arm, that's where Chad and I really want to play is how do we shift perspective to say, hey, you may see something that is uh, life draining and it doesn't serve. And we may say, oh, there's all the opportunity there. You just need mm -hmm. to a little bit. And so I think that's where we really want to play is how do we bring this just joy and perspective shift to bring safety, which is our root chakra, which is Maslow's higher needs of when, when we're safe, when that foundation is safe within us, you go through psychology, you go through religion, you go through any of these modes of safety, then we can build a foundation that is healthy and aligned and growing together versus a foundation that is crumbled with a perspective based on fear and around safety. Yeah, it's interesting you put that um, story out there about Okay, they're just they're just wet prints in the in the in the floor, right? But what I think is important, and I want I want the audience to pay attention to this because there's a really vital point that that Jenna Jennifer you're making. Regardless of how you see it, that's not the only way it can be seen. So no matter what business situation you're facing or personal situation you're facing, I'm not telling you that you need to seek help. What I'm saying is seek help because somebody else will turn your head a little bit and you see it with a different perspective. And you can actually take a deep breath and realize I'm not the only one who sees it. Somebody else sees it a different way. And because of that different perspective, you have two different angles that you can approach any challenge, any problem, or any opportunity to do things differently. And I think that's what makes Genesis so unique is you add that perspective because you're willing to open up your own mind and your own avenue to see things differently than most people. And when you're working with clients that are so rigid in this is the way we've done it, this is the way we've always done it, this is what we have to do moving forward. And you're the one that's saying, well, wait a minute, if you've always done it this way and it's always been working this way, how do you expect to get any better? How do you expect to go to a different level? Because there's no quote, everything you've done to right now has gotten you to this point. What are you going to do differently to be different? That's a huge burden that people just don't understand until they're in it and they understand it. And I appreciate what you do at Genesis and now Albi is you bring this client to a point where they have to make a decision, right? Yeah. And, it, and, if, it's, and if it's done with passion, innovation and, and this focus and fun, you have people that are willing to engage with you because it makes complete sense to engage with you. And that's what, that's what makes what you do as a service so much better because people can tie themselves to it. And I, I, that's what I really like about what you're doing. Thank you. And then, and then if you go to just looking at your organization and a business as its own 
uh, entity, its own being, its own life thing. And again, those Mas Maslow, that foundation piece, we have to build rapport. You have to have trust in mm -hmm. me and in our team that we're guiding you in that that correct way. And so that's where that relational piece, that's where that through through that storytelling, through that fun, we connect and trust is built. So you could say, you know what, I, I do value uh, Jennifer's input and I do value her perspective because she she has my best interest in mind. And it's a yeah. from a safety perspective of the organization, because as business owners, we don't like people to look at our finances necessarily. We don't like people to look under the hood of our stuff because sometimes it's not pretty under there. And to really just be honest, and I loved what you said, what brought us to here, we're doing the same thing, but we're here now. Now, where do we go to accentuate it and to, and to get us to the next place? Because otherwise, that's a definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, that we were stuck. And so that perspe perspective change based on safety, trust, relationship, where we nurture that, but that's through fun and joy because joy is the highest frequency. And so when we amplify joy, we're now amplifying on a high frequency that everyone loves. And so we we connect on human level and then we can get under that hood and we can get under those financial financials and we can get under their operations to say, these are those things that may or may not be working. And so how do we have that perspective change to then grow? And if that growing means that you no longer use us, but you have that perspective change, outstanding. Take that baby and yeah. run and grow. We'll if that going. ongoing, hey, we need to continue to nurture that and grow that, then we can do long-term engagements as well. So we're really nimble and make things customizable to really meet organizations where they're at. I love that. The the opportunity to meet people where they are, that seems to be a new, the latest buzzword, right? I'm going to meet you where you are. I get it. But you want to you want to meet them meet people where they are, but have their head tilted to the angle of that's where you're going over there. So let's pay attention to where you're going based on where you are, an important aspect of where you've been. Let's use those learning lessons and then we're going to chart a course for it. I think it's brilliant. I appreciate everything you've had to say today. I have one last question for you. Sure. If I were to give a time warp and send you back to the year of an 18 year old Jennifer sitting on a bench and you get the chance to walk up and sit down next to her, what would you say to the 18 year old Jennifer? Yeah, it's beautiful. You're going to make me cry in this one. Um, <laughs> I would say, um, oh, sweet darling, you have everything within you. You have everything within you. And just to trust, to trust the road's scary. And sometimes it's dark. Sometimes it's lonely, but you have everything within you when you put one hand in the hand of God and you put the other hand in the hand of community and you come together in this beautiful Trinity of not wow. isolation and just, I'm not alone. And so when you bring in whoever God is to you, divine source, great spirit, Buddha, whoever you pray to, but when you put your your mm -hmm. hand in that activation, and then you put your hand in community and people around you, there is a cord that can't be broken. And so I would just lift her head and say, have faith and you have everything within you. If you put one foot in, on on spirit and the other foot on community and just a trust and lead in that way. Brilliant. That is from everything we've had a conversation on all the notes I've taken, Jennifer. That is the definition of who you are as a human being. And I, I appreciate you for being so candid and transparent and willing to tell your story because it's a beautiful story. And you were not lying when you said, well, my story, <laughs> it's a love story. It's a story in progress, but it's a masterpiece. Hmm. And I, I commend you on the masterpiece you're creating because it's not done, but you're going to keep going. So thank you for being a part of the show. This has been great. And you made me cry. So, oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> But there's okay. something there's something about an emotional connection. So I, I appreciate it. Thank and you. Um, all the information to get in touch with Alby to get in touch with Genesis Associates will be down in the description below. So everyone can click and, and get to meet you. LinkedIn profile, all that stuff will be here. So people get a chance to connect. And I, I encourage you, man, this is a great conversation. I can't wait to continue. Thanks so much. Jennifer. We'll talk soon. Thank you. It's a joy.